We are playing presidential plane first. The game is underway. First things first, differences from these two teams. Are we going to see more Rook? Um, probably. I would say most likely, yeah. Give me some confidence, Bundy Stick. Give me a I'm yes or a no. Rook. I'm ready for yes some Rook. Yes or a yeah. no. Yeah, we're going to yes. see Rook. Here more Rook. Comes, right? Bungie Stick's calling Rook. Rook. He tried already. to stall until and they actually showed Doc up on the screen. Rook. Just but as I said. But he didn't get it in time. But it still paid out for it. The Rook <laughs> is there. There we go. You be more confident in yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doc and Rook, as you mentioned, three armor users. This is what we asked for earlier on. Three armor is powerful as all hell here Especially on plane. Especially this close where moving fast, it can help. But it's, I mean, when it comes down to all these little lanes, which is a lot of plane, you just need to be able to take some damage. Mm -hmm. A lot of crosshair placement being very, very low from these players. Right. They, they'll take those first couple of shots and then aim up towards the head or use the recoil to take it up towards the head. You can survive more damage from those first couple of shots right. if you've got a lot of armor being three and Rook on top making you a four. So hopefully it'll pay off. As it is, Frost, Jaeger and Smoke are the remaining selections. Frost with a 9mm SMG though, not the shotgun this time around. So we'll see how Bios can pull that one off and of course it is Chris Koo here on his Jaeger. He ties it time and time again, and he is devastating while using it. And Furious SG is running that Smoke. Smoke, who arguably on the consoles isn't used so much for his SMG 11. He is used more of that static sitting on the site and using his Smokes to stall people defender, which I think he will be played more of that style on the PC once the patch changes have come through. Sure. But as if to prove me wrong, he is going to check outside very early on with the SMG 11. Can't get the kill though. Does get a little bit of a tag off onto no one actually missed completely. Yeah, a little whiff. That's a shame. But, but I, like the I like that he just you know took the one shot and then backed off. It's yep. like we'll see if it happens. It didn't. Okay, I'm done. If he had gone for that second peak, probably would have cost him. He'd be dead. So Chris Coop, not got loads of space to roam around because of how small and tight and close this map is. Does put a barbed wire into the joining space. Ash has come upstairs to join him. Bios is running the other end of the plane. Both on this floor still. He thinks he's being droned and he's running around and looking for the thing. It is not moving. It is not in here. There it is, you can hear it now, but he starts firing towards the door as Angsul sends Zephyr in with the diffuser in hand. So I do not like him going in so aggressively with that, but he's inside. Zai now is droning for him. We'll give him some locations on Chris Goot. Sends a couple of shots off. Chris Q comes around the corner. Neither of them landing too much, but he takes down Raisin Gain from a different angle as he tries to come in and back Ash up. And there he is. Grabs a second kill as well. Zafir goes down. Bios on the other end of the plane takes out one as well, and it's all crumbled for Angsel in a very, very short space of time. Coming now down to join Chris Q up this end. Drops straight into his crosshairs, and Chris Q has that nailed. Look at that. Right onto where the heads are going to be. Either side, dancing back and forth. This man has phenomenal stick control. <laughs> Why are you giggling at that? Uh, Why are you giggling at stick control? There we go. Finds Poseidon, drops him down as well, puts him on the floor. Bios finishes him off with his P9. P9? MP5. Not so MP5, three players, one at a time, just walked in and died essentially to Crisco in the same spot. Yep, and Zai is up top. Crisco goes Attack and finds him. Down they go. That's vitality for you boys. That's why they're a crowd favorite. That's why Chris Goo is who we said we needed to watch. And he gets effectively four kills this round. Locked and loaded. Didn't even break a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> Just made bungee stick giggle like a little girl at stick control. It's a perfectly normal hockey saying. I guess so. Because this is hockey, so. No, this is Xbox, but they have sticks as well. We're going to move on from this. Meeting room and executive <laughs> office is uh, Axel's choice for defense. Vitality are taking the Fantastic Five as their attack squad. And we do have Rook coming out again. And Chris Koo is using that Ash, so very similar weapon to the Jaeger. And he plays it in a very similar way, very fast, very mobile, quick corner peaks, and great crosshair placement to allow him to get these quick and early headshots. We'll see if he can use it. It is key 
on attack here to bust open sites. You need to get those early peaks because the defenders are going to be locked in and hidden in positions if you let them dig down. So you need to get those quick kills before they can return fire on you from their dug-in positions. Unspooled some wire. No. The fast peaks are king. And on this bomb site, we saw a couple of uh, interesting strategies earlier on from our previous teams, locking themselves out of the A bomb site and just completely abandoning it, basically. Let's see if Angs will do the same thing or different. They also have an SMG on their frost. And their smoke is not peaking any spawns. Their Jaeger, though, is running down the far end of the plane. Zafir still perhaps a little bit sore at the damage that was done to him and his team from this end by Krisku. Going to go and try and answer to it. Sprays through and takes Krisku's head clean off. Really nicely done. Takes down the big key man and turns tail and run. Does get droned out so they know he's turning and running in. And that has allowed Squall inside. Turns to try and get the drone, but doesn't wait long enough. And Furious SG continues to chase him back down the plane. But smart play. Get one kill, fall all the way back. And now you have that man advantage and you're wasting all of their time up the other end of the plane. I'd just like to point out there's two armor on the ground still. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. But definitely a good play by Zephyr. Just get up there, take out their MVP and back off. Didn't go, he knew there was another guy there. Didn't go for him. Just knows he's way better off making them stall for time. They're gonna look for him for a while there. Does get burned. Kills it and then hides again. Doesn't have too far to fall back to. Doesn't need to. Knows he's got a good crossfire on the top of the stairs here from Zai. Here's some breaking underneath him. Peeks around it, but Anthrax baited him with it. Anthrax. Anthrax. Sorry, yes, there's too many A's, different people. Keeping me honest. Good job, Bungie Stick. Furious SG on his drone does see. That smoke locked in the corner, same as we've seen time and time again, and forced him to use one of his smoke charges. So, getting that out early on, throws a second one into the stairs onto Anthrax, and forces him back and away from that barbed wire. Then chooses to reposition slightly. So, Smart Plane knows that once he's been spotted in one location, he can't keep the move, or he will get caught out. And in fact, he does get grenaded out, so downed, but they do not know this. And Thrax is still taking out that barbed wire and does make it clear as teammates up here to help him out. So the last man pushing from the main entrance is Bios, and he's got Frost locked here in the main meeting room through that window. The other three are coming from this end. Raising Gun takes down Anthrax through that hole in the stairs. And Thermite has blown open the kitchen wall. EMP is coming on in, trying to scare people out. It will drone on in. Right next to it is a bandit. He peeks around, goes for the spray. Thermite sprays back, and Thermite wins. Down he gets one kill. Sprays straight into the objective. Goes prone. Poseidon finishes off Bios as he tries to follow him in. Poseidon's now on the far end. Pistols down, raising Gan. Now, Frost in the far side bombsite. Will pick him up as he tries to stand up. Weird weapon, whatever that is. Equinox gets the kill, though. Stands up into the crosshairs. A little bit more panic, but of course he had no ammo in his main gun, only had the pistol and that was low. And uh, they knew exactly where he was. One round apiece. Defenders coming out true, which is more along the vein of what we expected right. from this map. Absolutely. Um, definitely seeing that hallway as a favorite smoke spot, for sure. Very much so. So, Vitality's turn to defend the same location, meeting room and executive office. And they've swapped smoke for uh, Capcan. Interesting. Need to locate and defuse bomb. Just want the armor, I guess. So, yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that, actually. Um, this the I mean, the, the power of smoke's ability to stall for time is definitely huge. Obviously, as far as winning gunfights go, taking Capcan, I mean, high armor, great gun with great rate of fire. Not the worst thing in the world, but I do think the amount that a smoke can stall on this map where it totally just shuts down an entire... I'd point. argue this bombs... Yeah, this bombs... Cap cam on the downstairs bomb site over smoke, I'm not okay with bad, that. Yeah. It's more spread out, you are having more gunfights, one smoke is not going to lock them off quite so much. Right. But this end, yeah, meeting room, executive office, this is such a small, like, closed space that as we saw, that, that hallway, right. one you smoke can lock out four players with <laughs> You can't go around. There's oh, no... Yeah. Once you once you smoke the hallway or even up here if they're trying to push in through the door or the drop down, 
no matter where they're pushing from, one smoke can stop that entire direction, giving the entire the team the ability to just watch the other way yeah. the whole time the smoke's up. Trex opening up this wall using his pistol rather than a Tachenka. Just double checking those windows are still impenetrable. I can confirm they are anthrax. <laughs> and down they go now. Settled on in, Vitality. Got their little kill holes, got their little beaks done, and Crisco has watched you again. Being droned out, does not get the kill on it, but is forced upstairs, and now Zafia is cautiously waiting for him. He's gonna herd him, sprint there underneath. He's now looking through this tiny little gap between two server cases. No one there. That drone is behind him though. Zai spots him. Raising gun now coming underneath as well. He knows he's being hunted. He has to try and get himself out of here. They are wasting time trying to find him though. And that's all his job's here for, really. Yes, he's a monster. And yes, he's getting lots of kills. But he doesn't have to. Right. Especially just playing those servers is so powerful. It takes such a long time to push into him. Zai sends another run up behind him. We will spot him in a minute, but Equinox has dropped down now into this location. So he knows as soon as he sees where Crisco is, how far forward he can come. There we go. The core will have been made. Zai actually saves his drone's life, and again, Crisco has to fall back. Now the drone is killed, and he's still turning tail and running. Knowing that that drone is coming from this direction has made him a bit scared that they may be coming from him, coming to him from here. That is not the case. Sprints across the hallway again. Right up and locked against the cockpit now. Equinox just droned him in. He didn't see that drone because it was hidden under his weapon model. Now, there's the spray coming onto the corner from Equinox. He knows exactly where Chris Coot is. But they have wasted two minutes of the round trying to track him down. Into the cockpit he goes. Down the stairs he goes. Zephyr will have spotted him now on that drone. Does turn tail and run further back into the kitchen again doesn't need to have shot anyone his job is done they're down to 45 seconds and they are nowhere near the objectives Poseidon bottom of these stairs is very low Equinox is now right up there on the floor above and still very very slowly pushing forward we're gonna switch it up and have a look at the diffuser because it's on Ash his squall oh takes down him but Zephyr Brazen again walks straight into his crosshairs so gets a two for one on the wrong team Crisco now across the gap will spray back onto Zephyr Crisco dropped down but has done a lot of damage to Zafir in the time and they've got 20 seconds left and three to find. Three very healthy members of Vitality. The EMP goes into the kitchen. Very nearly walks onto that trap but turns and runs. And Thrax is firing down the corridor and will not tag onto Ash. All it needs is a small little tag. Wall is blown open. Zai and Equinox get into the bomb site. Two seconds. They've got to hold the diffuser. Can't do it. Furious G and Anthrax clean up Anxel. And round number three once again goes to the defenders. I have to say, your ability to hype it up and be so aggressive at the end there as it wrapped up, yet still drag out Anthrax <laughs> pretty solid. Um, yeah, that was again... It was a good breach into that room at the end, to be completely honest. Once that right. thermite went off, they went straight in there. They picked up a frost that was locked in the corner. It was if good. she had a shotgun, she'd have slaughtered them, but with the SMG, she couldn't do that. But, but the amount of time that they had to spend trying to chase Crisco as he all he did was slowly back off the servers every time the drone he just went a little bit back didn't yep. go all the way back just a little bit just keeping himself out of the gunfight each time even though Attackers he's a strong player might have been able to win the 1v1 wasn't even didn't need to risk it yep. no point and wasted two full minutes before they even got to the end of the servers and that is the sign of a great rumor bomb located by attackers and yes he threw his life away a little bit more at the end but again in doing so slowed them down once more and he did so in a position where he couldn't fall back any further without standing on his teammates right. and exactly that is what we saw happen to Zephyr. Right. Teammates were so stacked on top of each other because as attack they kind of have to be, they don't have many options to go with and as it is, Zephyr spraying onto that hallway, spraying in there as a teammate walks straight in front of him and he skull caps it. Yeah. In a situation like that I think it's guy in front should just crouch. Go in front, you just wait, trust in your teammate. Why do you have to peek? If your teammate's already firing in that direction, why peek? If you bring out, you know, a crouch, kind of like a high-low type deal, you have a guy crouching in front, guy in back standing, and you both peek, you bring twice as much gun power, you're guaranteed to trade pretty much, assuming you're both decent players. And uh, it would have worked great there, but of course, just strafing out in front of your teammates. Crosshair doesn't really bring much to the game at all. So, Zafir picks off Crisco right at the start of this round once again, but is immediately traded back again as he'd stuck his head outside the window. They have taken a very different bomb set again, which we haven't actually touched on yet. It is the staff area and 
the bedroom. So, we did see this succeed in some earlier weeks in uh, North American Xbox. Once again, Axel's left two armors. They have two people that consistently yeah, just don't need mag. it, apparently. It is. It does feel like it's a very open bomb site, but again, it's two very, very tunneled and s funneled specific entranceways. Right. If they don't open that drop down, there's only one way into B unless and this you come through A. Yeah, and this is a drop down which doesn't have so much of a strong top down advantage because of these lockers for luggage here at the top of the plane. Right. They actually nuke off a lot of the vision, even once that trapdoor has been broken. So. You can hide over to this far side and still be relatively hidden compared to most normal trapdoors. So we'll see exactly what the plan is then for Vitality. Diffuser still on Twitch, is upstairs. He's got BIOS B in support. And Squall will come on upstairs to find a down Furious G. What happened here? Vitality. Pers oh, sorry, Anx or Poseidon happened, but Anthrax comes in behind him, cleans him out. So that Roma cleaned out with quite efficient play, but there's still only a minute on the clock. Teamwork was used, but they wasted a lot of time. Still have the Thermite alive though, and that is big. He can blow open a wall, and that will give them ultimately no extra ways in because it is still all leads into this one same hallway but it is a second line of fire for the defending team. But right now it's a line of fire straight into a smoke charge. This is the beauty of smoke in this location. Right, and by just the time they can make that push it. through smoke, there's gonna be 10 seconds left. Equinox is looking into the sun directly, sees one player run across and make the silhouette, goes for the shots and misses, goes for a reload, and just hides, darting around behind the be uh, bed. Raising game comes around one side. There's a nice crossfire. Equinox grabs the kill. Zai takes down Squall, who was trying to plant within the smoke. 12 seconds left. No smoke charges left, though. Sprints around in. Anthrax is down. Furious Dree grabs Equinox. Now he's got the diffuser. Does get the kill onto smoke. Now he's got to get the plant down, though. And he's firing straight in. Doesn't have the time. Can't get behind the site. In fact, didn't pick up the diffuser at all. Very close, but ultimately, I think smoke just wrapped it up for him. Mm hmm. They pushed on in there with 40 seconds left. Smoke's still alive. He smoked them out three times, killed one with it. 10 seconds on the clock once he'd finished all of his smoke in. Right. And three players left to kill. They did very well to kill two of them. Yeah. But that was not enough time to get the plant down. This is definitely the plane we expected to see. Yep, an IQ coming out again. IQ instead of Twitch. Interesting choices. But hey, I mean, with operators like that, it definitely comes down to preference. Defend and if you're more comfortable with the AUG, again, we talked before that maybe the slow rate of fire is more popular. I was going to say, the, the recoil is definitely harder to control on console. For sure. That's why we're seeing a lot more burst fire. We're not seeing so much held trigger. And we're definitely seeing the aim just jump all over the place after a prolonged bit of fire. So yeah, maybe the faster fire rate, they really do hate it because they cannot control it. IQ. Doesn't have that. She has slow fire rate and she has a lot of damage output, so you don't need to land as many shots to do all the damage. Right. Anthrax opening up a couple of extra kill holes into this cool hallway. Putting shield behind it to keep him safe. Much better job from Vitality picking up all this armor too. Only one left in there. That's been picked up as I speak. Now it is all gone. Crisco then. You are the man of the hour. You've had a terrible two attacking rounds, but your defending rounds have been... Well, actually, one of them is big. Now I mention him. And Thrax is doing a lot of work himself. I mean, no, yeah, his first his first round, he decimated the team. His second round, he didn't scoreboard-wise hit it big, but he did blow two full minutes of the match that is up top that is by true. doing absolutely nothing except walking backwards. He's Zephyr. Here's Zephyr. Drops Zephyr. Diffuser down. Diffuser down will come out. Not going to change too much considering how early in the round it is, but... But that is the second time they've thrown the diffuser into the plane first. Yep. Oh, Equinox takes him out very, very quickly from above. So, not so good at diffuser. defending or at delaying them this time over, Mr. Grisku. Two minutes on the clock still then for the attacking squad. Ansel 
feel a lot safer now that he's gone. Let's see where you're sending Poseidon's IQ. Sending it to the front of the plane. And she's chucking in through the windows. Down into the cargo hold then with the defenders. Three of them watching this back stairwell. And Doc, the lone man, at quite a range with a P90. Watching the front hallway. That is the direction Poseidon is likely to come from. He is checking every little nook and cranny before making his way downstairs. And is in fact bypassing that hallway completely. Does not want to go anywhere near that dock. Looks like he forgot which team he was on for a second. Yep. We've all done it. You see a oh drone. Yeah. Oh, it's a drone. Kill it. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Still looks a bit confused. Dancing back and forth in the kitchen. As the mic goes on upstairs to join the SAS pairing that have finally remembered there's a camera in this room. Defenders being very, very patient waiting downstairs. Furious SG on smoke then. In the one location where smoke can be very, very powerful in this map, just throws it right at the bottom of those stairs and laughs for days. Because once again, Angsu are waiting. They are 40 seconds on the clock and still stuck upstairs with three smokes. One at the top of that trap door. Hasn't seen anyone else come down the stairwell. Equinox health bar there on his screen is a bug. He is still full health until he walks into that frost trap. Anyway, frost will go around, try and finish him off. Does it with C4 to begin with? Can't see the second man, but the second man has the diffuser. He will raise again then, get cleaned out as he tries to peek that to trap door. Raisin again gets inside with the diffuser, tries to put it down, but Furious SG pushes him and puts him out of his misery. Diffuser picked up by one last remaining member of Angsol. Zai is dropped by Furious SG again as he gets stuck in the barbed wire. Can't move fast enough and gets pummeled. Can't wait that long to attack these bomb sites, especially not on plane. It's not like on other sites where you can wait that long kill off the two people that are in there and get the plant down before the other guys rotate back to help out. Right. This map is tiny. They're already there helping out as soon as the shooting starts. And consistently, both across this game and the one before, you know once you hit that 40 second mark, if smoke is still up, you're, the, you're gonna have five seconds to push in by the time yeah. it's done. If you are scared of someone else being somewhere else on the map, to begin with, you're playing as Vitality. No one else is anywhere else on the map. It's Krisku. That's it. You Defender know that. Right. You've killed him. So the rest are far away. If there is someone else doing anything crazy, start pressuring the objectives, burn the smokes, and then while you're safe on one side of the smoke and they're on the other, turn around and kill the guy that's flanking you. Right. That's when you draw him out. You make him come to you. As it is, you waited for two minutes to so this guy that was never going to show up, and then, as you say, stuck on the wrong side of smokes, and dead again. I feel like every team's doing the same thing right now while playing this map. This one is going a little bit more evenly, not so chaotic and sporadic as we saw in the first game of the day, a team just sprinting at, through and around smoke, and getting away with things that really shouldn't have been working for them. But ultimately, still plenty of work to be done. Everything going the defender's way though this so far. Poseidon and Anxel, their full squad now on defense of the meeting rooms and the executive office still setting up as we sit. No one peeking too far outside, but Zafir is down the back end of the plane looking for someone to come in this way. He's done well picking off Crisco in the first few attack rounds. Grabbed that kill early on, but was then droned out. That's the turn Tyler around. He's not doing what we saw with Crisco, not doing it slowly, just going the entire way until he knows it's safe to turn, kill the drone. But it's still then running further as the shots were rattling off close by. Quick check up to the cockpit. Puts last barbed wire he's got down in the... Tries to put the last barbed wire down in the kitchen. Going up. Nice little spot to lock anyone there. And a grenade to, or a trophy yeah, system to potentially to destroy any EMPs coming towards this door and, and to kill him while he's locked in that corner. Doesn't want to go too much further again because Zai has that crossfire with him here at the top of the stairs. Grenade being thrown by Bios. Doesn't do too much damage to anyone. Alright, you weren't killed at the start of the round, Chris Coop. We praised your Ash play, your aggressive peaks, your early kills. Can you do it this time for us? Or for your team more than anything else. Vitality need it. They need to win this attack round to give themselves that buffer. Otherwise, we're going to be steadily bouncing back and forth 
into overtime. Overtime. And overtime is not going to go well for Vitality. They started on defense, which means they'll start overtime as attack. Right. And if we keep getting defense wins, that's, that's the round, uh, the map lost for them. So yeah. one of these attack rounds has to work for them. Now knows there's someone in here. Goes for a quick shoulder peek and hides again. Tries to find out where it is. Sprays a solid wall as he doesn't know exactly that Zephyr is still holding steady. Grenade goes up towards the cockpit. Here's Zephyr peeking out and he wins the trade. Crisco goes down. Zephyr will come around the corner and drop him and get the second one onto Squall as well. That's the diffuser down. 30 seconds to go. Bios B is taken out by Zai. Furious G walks straight into the kitchen where Zephyr is still hiding and he gets a third. Twitch now has five people to find. And he's at the bottom of the stairs. Does find Zephyr. Finally stops his reign of terror. Let's go Anthrax as he tries to find four remaining players and 30 seconds. He's also going to get the Diffuser. He's got so far to go. Raising against behind the chair. The shots come rattling through. Anthrax takes a lot of damage but cannot find the kills. And with 20 seconds to go, is Save leaving the, the plane. <laughs> Saving the orb. <laughs> Up the main entrance well, he goes. Still good time, maybe. 15 seconds to Maybe still kill not. four. They're all looking the wrong way, but here's Poseidon. Pre-fires as he hears him at the top of the stairs. Down goes Anthrax, and once again, the defenders win. Three rounds to three, and we are getting ever closer to the pivotal overtime, which could spell defeat for Vitality if things continue this defense-winning train. Zephyr destroyed that round. Yep. I mean, I, I thought for sure, when he took out Crisco, I thought, okay, there goes Crisco, but it'll probably be a trade. Instead, it turned out three kills on top. Yeah, how many times do you see three people push a doorway? First one gets downed, but not outed. The killer then sprints forward. Ah, I can get a kill. He's down. I can get a kill. Right. He can get slaughtered get by the, the next trade. man. Exactly. No, he kills Zephyr first, then gets Squall second. It's not even that he shot Squall and then finished off the downed right. player. His, his priorities were on the downed player, but he survived. He got away with it. And, uh, yeah. Vitality yeah. paid I think price. even he expected the trade, which is why, you know, Attack get the down player, I might die. At least I secured yeah. one player down and Crisco yeah. no less, and uh, it ends up just dropping three and basically causing the win. So. And Vitality picking up the armor again. Still got the SMG 9mm on Vitality's Frost. It is working for them, so let's go with it. Chris Goose back there on his Jaeger. And this time, again, Cap Can over Smoke. But right now, I suppose Anxel is still playing so damn slowly that even a Smoke isn't causing them issues. Racing Can loses his drone. But this puts, uh, no matter what, Vitality's in a bad spot because they need this and then they have to win an attacking round or they go to OT where they still have to win an attacking round. Yep. So they're not in a good place. Not at all. No early window picks this time, but he hasn't needed it. And he's still done a good job defending and stalling players. Drones are roaming around underneath him. Here he is. The window being blown open again. It's where he's killed Zephyr a couple of times with that quick kill. Zephyr this time doesn't have the shots rattling off towards him. He's going to be suspicious then as to where Crisco may be, as this has happened so many times over. Raising Gun is on his drone, and Equinox is up here on the top floor with Crisco. Crisco's chased away though. Drain. Drain. The drone did find him. So he has to turn tail and run. Gives Equinox the chance to drop down into the server room and prone inside. Crisco just looking for that little peak, trying to draw out a fire just to let someone know. Yes, yes, we're here. Just, just to confirm for you, we are coming. Shot he isn't going to arrive there, and he turns around to turn and run again. That's going to be a dangerous way to play. Come if they do make it to the finals, because that's one of those things that will not work out nearly as well on LAN as it does over the internet. What, shoulder peeking? Just continuously those little peaks over and over again. If they're actually shooting at you, yes. Right, right. But continuously doing that when no one's shooting, it's still fine. Takes a couple of shots of Poseidon. Neither of them landing too much damage on the other, though. But the drone is still there from Zephyr. It does confirm to him that Chris Coop is close by. So he chooses to reposition again. minute on the clock so they've still wasted two minutes then trying to find him and once more he is now hiding tight. Lights go out, CMP goes off in the cockpit. 
Obscure repositioning to be closer to his team should they need him to immediately back up that hole instead. Raising Gen's drone completely misses him and he lets the kill go over to Doc so they don't realize he's hiding in this corner. Peeks around one side. Hopefully, hoping that he can catch him by surprise. Trying to grenade underneath the sofas. That's four members of Angsor coming in through this kitchen. 30 seconds on the clock. Chris Kuku get a complete whitewash here. Finds Raising Gan. Can he get the kill? No, he gets down, but he does finish off one. Zai finishes Chris Kuku off, but there's still four players to find and 20 seconds to do it in. We've seen it before. They've come in, they breathe through this wall, but then they have to get the kills and the plant. Here's there's the explosion. Grenades are coming through. C4 from Bios takes down one player. The diffuser goes down as Equinox is finished off. Zephyr's trying to push through, but there's barbed wire everywhere, and there's only seven seconds for him to get in. Does take Anthrax down, but he's a dock, so it takes even more time. Poseidon sprints on in, and defenders win round number seven. As once more, Crisco delays them for two whole minutes as they're trying to search the rest of the plane for him. That they push in with 20 seconds to go. And surprise, surprise, run out of time. Yep. <laughs> Again, he. He got that one kill, didn't even need to. They still would have run out of time, whether they got it or not. Just that two minutes of trying to catch up to him in the server room, but being too cautious. I mean, you'd almost argue, given that it's the same thing every time, you'd just push three, four people in the server room and go, and just get the trade. If he yep. takes one of you out, so be it. You know, I mean, they've they've been able to take him out. It's not like he's totally outplaying them in gunfights. No. So get in there, walk over him with three people, get the trade. And now you'll have way more time to push the bomb. As it is then, Anxel back on defense. They are choosing this middle floor bomb site again, rather than the cargo hold, which is most everyone else's second choice. But it has worked for them once. And it worked for them very, very convincingly too. So no reason it shouldn't work this time. We saw an early Spawn peak. They've switched out Capcan for their rook, which normally I'd argue with, but no one was picking up the rook armor anyway, so what does it matter? Yeah. <laughs> Five seconds to you have picked up a couple of early kills in previous rounds. Attackers recovered the bomb. Are you going to try it again? It doesn't look like it. Just putting down some barbed wire by a couple of doors. There is also a drone here that he didn't seem to realize was spotting him out. There's Anthrax running across at range. As Squall looks to make his way up the stairs. Strap at the top of that ladder. Still just running around in circles as Squall's drone finally gets spotted and taken out. And Thrax is running all the way down the other end of the plane. They're going to come in through the main entrance once more, like before. Bios B is coming up underneath Zephyr now. Oh, and he goes up the ladder at the last second. Free fire comes on through. Chris Goo's going up top, so he could drop down in here to find himself that Jaeger, if the Jaeger hadn't turned and ran quite, quite, quite so far. But Vitality are still searching this end of the plane for him. Still think he could be close. They are wasting time now because of it. Two minutes on the clock for them. They've wasted one already. Now they're starting to get eyes on the bomb sites themselves, A and B. Both spotted out nicely. VSG deciding to come back inside as Poseidon takes down Chris Q. From the other end of the plane, Anthrax is starting to make his pressure known. Bayos trying to grenade up from underneath, but again, all the trophy systems are doing their work. Squall now going downstairs to try and join his teammate, join that sledge. He has the diffuser. What can they do from down here? Squall and Furious G both coming to join them, in fact. They're going to go straight up the other end of the plane and all going to loop up here with Anthrax at the top of these stairwells in the kitchen. Checking every single corner again. Droning on out with a minute on the clock. They're going to look to get to the A-bomb site. But there's barbed wire everywhere right now. Squall's drone gets killed on its way back out. Up the stairs is a fear. Camera is killed off. He's just waiting for them to come around. There's Furious G. Tags him. Can't get the kill. Shoots him in the back and takes him down this time around. Squall's there now. Squall will down Zephyr, but the damage has been done. Equinox is going to peek out from behind them. Picks up one kill and backs away and survives from it. 
two attackers left. One is Anthrax, and he's still checking the top of the stairs. They don't know that he's been downed up there, but they've got their suspicions. Forward goes Squall, and he's got the diffuser. Around the corner he goes into barbed wire, into Equinox's crosshairs. Anthrax goes up the stairs and does finish off Sophia, but now he's got three to find and 20 seconds to do it in. Only 15 left on the clock as he picks up the diffuser. Zaya takes him out from range, and once again, defenders win. Overtime it is, and this is going to switch everything up for Vitality. So Anxel picking this map must obviously know that this is not a strong map for Vitality. Because they've been playing their defenses pretty well, given that they didn't even bother to pick up their Rook armor and things like that. They've still managed to win effectively all of their defense rounds. Picked by Anxel, Vitality starts defense by Vitality defense now. That is interesting. Were we both delusional? Do you not swap? Over time? I thought so. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Setting combo pack here. That was games earlier today, and you did switch. Um. <clears throat> well, all right. As it is, <laughs> if this is incorrect, they have until 15 seconds into the first round to challenge it. Same as every other rule in the book. If. Angsor think they should be on defense. They've got 30 seconds left to say it. As it is, they're playing it out. And Vitality are defending. We'll go with it as it is. Three right. heavy army users then. Once more, Vitality taking exactly the same defense they did before. Maybe we get it backwards. So. It straight up the backside again. He's got Raisin Gun's drone inside for him, scouting this time around. Just go. Where are you roaming to? Right up this end. Does see Raisin Gun's drone. One taps it. But now they know he's holding this end again. Equinox is going up towards the roof. He will drop in above him. He was picked up and killed from that hole once. After killing Zephyr. Kills another drone. Another one tap. Very nice aim. Zephyr now starts to make his way in. He hears it breaking. Now going to go and hide. Oh, he's going up the stairs, but Equinox is up here. We'll drop down into it in a moment. Drone comes forward, spots him. Zai gets him again with that one. But once more, like before, he's just falling back. This time he's going to stay on the corner. Goes to shoot the drone, but Equinox, the timing, just as he was about to go around the corner, he hit again. Makes a kill hole in the wall. Peeks on forward. Another drone. Takes that one out as well. Continues to fall back some more. Still just that 1v1 push. Checking through the trap door. No one there. But they're still pushing forward and looking for him. Makes a hole and goes to reload, but Equinox is awfully close now. Thankfully for Chris who goes back into his own drone. Equinox drones forward. It's not going to come back out again. It's going to peek you. Does peek him, goes for the shots, takes a lot of damage but can't kill him. They've used up well over half the round again, trying to hunt him down now upstairs. She's hiding in the cockpit. Once more, all he needs to do, and he knows it, is just fall back and fall back and fall back. And here they come, Equinox from below. Peeks and out. Both of them missed the headshot, but again, more trades. Just trying to keep him busy. The fear's coming up from underneath now. Both have got to come through the same doorway though. Grenade comes forward. Equinox again, not enough to put him down. And there we go. Crisco finally put on his ass. 50 seconds on the clock. They don't realize that you're completely down, I think. They will now get a suspicion. Misses the knife. Gets the second one. So two minutes and 20 seconds blown. Take him out. Yeah. 40 seconds to go. Thankfully for them, they have no smoke this time. Sledge will clear out the barbed wire. Here. Yeah. Seems to be lagging. But they have breached into the objective room and they're going to straight in again. Straight in do they go and straight down does Sledge go. Thermite above, definitely a miscoordinated push. Bios B does get downed in the side, but Anthrax will answer with the kill. Thermite is still up in the top. The Astronaut drops down through. IQ sprints into the same spot again and surprise, surprise, dies in the same way again. Now starts to spray through the wall. We'll tag onto Squall, but not enough. He's very, very low. And Thrax finishes off Zephyr, and again, they run out of time. Vitality take first round of overtime on defense. And they have 
Angsel has such a strong push in every time, but they just... If they would use that pushing pressure on Kisku, Krisku, I mean, they could have so much more time to push the objective. You know, the, the force that they use to actually push in is always pretty solid. Unfortunately, that time they didn't actually land too many of the kills. No, not that time. All sprinting in to Bios B's fire, even right. though they knew that the Rook was hiding behind the bomb to their right as well. No one stopped to try and fire at him first. They just sprinted straight past him. Right. But that was another two with all okay, that armor sitting in there, all the, the Rook, the Dock. It's those points like that where you're not going to get those precise headshots nearly as easily. And they have all those guys in there with three armor plus Rook plates. It just, cutting them down is virtually impossible. Oh. On to defense to try and level it back out at five rounds apiece as the Fantastic Five Vitality Attack arrives. Remember, we still got Chalet to go after this map too, so they are fighting tooth and nail for this first one, but it doesn't secure them points. Second map to go. Here comes the attacking team. We do see Zephyr down the far end of the plane, checking the windows. And once again, sees that Vitality spawned up this end. Gets droned and again, doesn't really seem too phased, kills it off. Checking the stairs, there we go. Chris Gu at the top of those stairs has sprayed through that doorway. Zephyr is thinking about challenging it, he wants to. Keeping an eye on Chris Coot. Letting him peek up, letting him spray through it. Goes on out now, goes for the fire. Takes down Chris Coot, takes down Squall. That's takes huge. Oh, nearly hits Furious SG. That is massive. Furious has no health whatsoever. And he's the Thermite, and there's the Diffuser. Zephyr comes out, drops him. Zephyr may have just won the round on that spot. Two members to go then for Vitality. It's Anthrax and Bios IB. At this Looking point. at the other end of the plane for Zephyr, but that's not going to do a whole lot. He will not re-peek there. He has no reason to. They know these guys are up this end. They know they can smoke them out, and there's just two minutes where they just have to wait. He knows, sorry, Zephyr knows the diffuser is down up that end as well. He's gonna hold out from the middle and peek out and see if he can shoot from this end. He does see Bias IB. A couple of shots, down he goes. Anthrax is now down the far end. Poseidon picks off Bias IB. Anthrax halfway down the staircase, does get spotted, sticks his head up, and there it is. Zephyr yeah, with four. Unbelievable. Is it four. four plus the down? Four plus the down, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Damn near aced him. Perfect timing on his part. He waited till the exact right moment when they absolutely were not ready for him to be there. And Welcome to presidential plane matchmaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice that was quick it. round. Maybe, maybe you put a bit of doubt in Vitality's mind. Maybe you just shake them up a little bit. They know right. they've won every defense. They know it's just an attack and it happens, but a little bit of doubt maybe. It's unfortunate after a play like that that they still have very hard road to get this victory right now. But I mean, this, see the confidence that took. You oh, saw yeah. the confidence it takes to break into the bomb sites earlier. Exactly. If he rolls Where that is that confidence this? when you're yeah. trying to kill Krisku? Right. When you're trying like, to hunt their Roma, why is everyone droning three feet and walking three feet? That's droning three feet. I mean, Send two drones, make him fight them. You know he tries to shoot them every time. As soon as he starts shooting the drone, sprint out and shoot him in the face. We've seen good aim from Krisku. He's exactly. obviously a, a professional player by all means, but I mean, Zephyr has fantastic game and reaction time as well. Uh, we've seen it time and time these past couple rounds. He's won. Krisku's lost as many gunfights as he's won. And all they got to do is be more aggressive on the push for him. If they just 2v1 him up top this time instead of 1v1 and just go, I mean, yep. they'll have so much more time to push the point. It's not like they're doing anything with those other players anyway. Those players are waiting for Zep uh, Krisku to be cleared out anyway. So... Why not? Just everybody push servers. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it feels like he did get three kills, almost four, in the opening round. Yes. Right. And they've been scared of him like that ever since. Right. But the the round after that, was no. that not the one that they took him out from the top very yeah. quickly? Nothing. He hasn't done anything that damaging since other than delaying their time. Look, he's five and nine. He's yeah. not having good game in after that first round. That first round was three right. of his kills. Yeah, so he's on the by bottom all means, and just playing for time. All yeah. he's done is cost him two minutes consistently every single round. Don't let him waste all this time. He's doing the same stuff from the same locations. He's doing this to begin with, and when he realizes he's been driven from here, he'll go up the stairs and be in the top floor, where Equinox has already dropped down in two. So there is progress, and he's coming forward very aggressively as well. All right, maybe they're listening. Angsel, <laughs> starting with some speed. 
The drones have spotted Crisco from where he is. Equinox back down towards that hole. Poseidon also now down in and upstairs. And they also, by the way, have noted a fuse into their roster. Clear the blast area. But once again, things have slowed and we've already gone through over a minute of time. Crisco walking forward, goes underneath that trap door, down into the basement he goes then, realizing the time he's wasted is sufficient. Half of the round whittled away then, already. Ash, down here in the cargo door entrance. We'll try and destroy that barbed wire, but it gets the trophy system. This barbed wire is gonna go down and that may take Crisco out as well as both grenades, one downs him, doesn't finish him the second one. Will they know that he's been downed in that corner? Or are they going to be scared all the same? BioSIB goes across this door, and Doc comes over to try and get Crisco up and gets away with it without being killed by Zephyr. That's a big mistake. He needed to get those kills. Needed to punish that out of position Doc. Couldn't do it. Crisco now back alive. The smokes are coming in. More sprays across the door from Zephyr. He's putting pressure on, but they can't punish it. And everyone from Angsel is locked upstairs again. 50 seconds on the clock. The diffuser is running around like a headless chicken. Sledge is gonna try and take out this barbed wire using the smoker's cover. Goes straight down and in. Checks the corner, sees Crisco. Sees, please tell me he saw the gun. He doesn't. Crisco comes out but gets shot in the back by Zephyr. He made that one count. And Thrax kills Zai as he's coming down the stairs. Zephyr now going in, takes a lot of damage. Furious GD takes down one and Thrax takes down a raising gun. Poseidon coming down the stairs with the diffuser is one of their last hopes. 20 seconds, Ash has no health and they are also being flanked. Doc in the corner, Rook gets taken down. Finished, Doc has no health, Reload comes in. Reload's gonna lose your life. Furious G picks up that one. Ash has 10 seconds to kill three players and it's all smoked Smoke. off. Go straight on in, go straight on down. Vitality, take map number one, six rounds to five. All right, kitchen trophy room then is the Vitality defense. Angsel, of course, chose to start attack on this map, it okay. being a Vitality choice of map. So. We'll see who they choose to do it with. They have got the Rook, we have got the Frost, and we've got a Cap Can again then for Vitality. But our Fantastic Five has been supplemented with a Fuse instead of a Twitch once more here by Angsor. Let's see if they can use that gadget, use the Fuse Charge itself to have a slightly more powerful effect than we saw on our last game from Indomina and 1UP Esport. I think they're going to. I just want to, see has some, faith. I want to see some defenders get flushed out straight into bullets, you know, or vice versa. All right, Fisher. No shotgun then on BIOS B. Not a map specific thing. He just straight up doesn't like Frost shotgun. Choosing the SMG instead. The other shotgun possibility is here on Smoke and he is also not using it. Straight up reinforcing this trap door then instead of using it as a flanking position. A novel, new idea from Vitality. See whether it pays off for them or not. Various different drones are set up in very different locations then. Four Angsel watching openings, waiting to be used again as the round begins. Of course, keeping drones alive is actually very, very important in this game. You think about it. In the last minute and a half of the round where people cannot afford to move too much, having 10 drones alive, 11 if you've got a Twitch, Right. can provide so much information oh, yeah. as opposed to when they all die in the first 45 seconds and then the enemy team has a full three minutes to just run around and completely change their positions. And as the attacking team, of course, having any drones in anywhere relevant at all that are still alive gives your dead players something still to be useful for. Yeah. Right? I mean, yep. if you're going to lose a player and not have a gun up, you might as well at least have somebody who can call some type of intel. Zai outside the windows breaks one and Crisco now has a suspicion of where he may be because of it. He hears him stand up, sprays at one window, but doesn't land a shot. Now Zai knows he's being watched and has to be very, very cautious. But he has a fear on this floor in support. He, however, cannot see where Chris is coming from. He has, though, pushed BIOS B back here into this corner. Poseidon now holding another angle, and Chris Q is they are going to take out Raising again from one other window. So they are trying to close in on all sides and lock down these Vitality Roamers, but they lose the first player to them. And in doing so, it allows Crisco and Bios to reposition. Bios further into the library. Crisco downstairs into a safer position, but actually by Equinox. Crisco will take out Zephyr, winning the trade this time. Didn't quite figure out where Equinox's shot was coming from, but Bios B has been down by Poseidon. So they're still hunting both roamers. Zephyr takes out a drone that was next to him. 
Decide and finish off by us. Equinox is coming up the stairs. The pre-fire was there, but it's not in the right spot. Here's Equinox now showing himself to Crisco again. Poseidon is in the room. And, wow, Crisco walks straight into his crosshairs. So, there are only three players alive for Angsor, but only three players alive now for the defending team as well. Not a lot of health here, though, on Poseidon. He's at 50%. Minute left on the clock. Still got his fuse charges. But they haven't decided to make any kind of dent into the objectives yet. Going to put a normal breach charge here above Squall's head. It will go off. Doesn't shake him too badly, but he will immediately reposition. So that, that should break in there. Another charge goes right off above Squall's head. Rings his ears, but doesn't do too much else. So that just starts to make holes here in the entrance towards the dining room next to him. He's going to look for an aggressive peek outside. Does see Equinox, but can't land the shots. Equinox will peek again. Does a lot of damage and does take Capcan down. Takes more damage in return, but ultimately Poseidon finishes Squall off when he's downed and on the floor. Smoke now being used to lock him inside that uh, main lobby. It's Furious G gets away thanks to the reload. Zion out, pinking around, trying to find him. Locks him in the kitchen. Takes him down. That's the diffuser on Thatcher, though. Finally allowed inside A. Anthrax is there, but Equinox picks him off from the other side of the bomb. And a last-minute round win for Angsor means the attackers get their first one on the board here at Chalet. <coughs> That's a very good push by Angsor. Yep. Really nice covering each other's back. Squall finishing off that down. Uh, beside him finishing off the down Squall there after Thatcher put him on his ass but couldn't finish him. Smoke luckily just about getting away thanks to Poseidon's reload. But could have been taken out. And then, yes, backing each other up, pushing the smoke back following each other in and there being there to trade on the defenders should it have gone badly. Yep. But now it's are on defense. Got a good start. They got some confidence from it. They've got themselves a rook. This time they're all picking up the armor. And they have a Super 90 on Poseidon. So are you going to use it to destroy trapdoors? Are you going to use it to open up those things? If you are, you've got to hope that Vitality play this map differently to you. Those trapdoors are only so useful if the attacking team come in through the basement. Right. Vitality didn't do that at all. Sorry, Angsor didn't do that at all. So Vitality got away with reinforcing those trapdoors instead of destroying them. I think um, judging by this being Vitality's pick, yet Angsor chose to start an attack, which you know obviously defending this bomb site is pretty easy. Um, I don't think Angsel's too upset about this pick. I have a feeling they're pretty confident in this map. Nope. And judging by that they picked attack and won it pretty easily. Judging by the way they locked down those roamers upstairs too. Yes, it right. wasn't clean with the firefights, but their positioning, their teamwork, and their, their crossfires were far better than we ever saw when they were trying to kill the roamers on plane. Right. So yeah, they definitely uh, have more practice on this map than they do plane, despite picking plane. Or so it seems. Yeah. Not destroying any of the trapdoors then with his shotgun and staying in the dining room. You were saying. Cast a curse strikes again. <laughs> Chris goes drone comes was alive so right underneath him. Close to him as well. I mean that was that was effort. That was oh that was effort. Oh. <laughs> his teammate. Oh Zephyr though was close to Bios. Just misses his head. Raising Gain now here with him as well. Two attackers just chilling their way through the main lobby. Frost opens up an entrance for him, and they're trying to reinforce it, but they can't thanks to that shield. Now they're going to have to do just the one. Frost does exactly that. Here we go. Charges going off on the floor above then from Bios. Looking through into the holes underneath. Sees Poseidon. The Super 90 gets the first shot off, but it's not enough of the kill. Here's the charges coming out then from Fuse, and it's immediately used again. Quite a range and away from Frost, though. She will be fine as she goes to check the hole again. Where's the next charge coming? Next one's going to be a breach charge. Another hole made. Decided. Ooh. Peek is there with the breach in Chan. Now we go to look at it again while mid reload. Poseidon's there still with the Super 90. Takes the worst of the trade that time. Zephyr finds Anthrax from a range and takes down the sledge. Poseidon still checking still underneath here. This time with his pistol, drops down through the hole instead this time over. And it's so incredibly low that Chris Goo will finish him off after finding him in the basement. The rest of the defenders then have a minute to go to continue holding this. Two of them in the kitchen. Squall now coming in from the, dine, uh, the main lobby area. Poseidon still firing on top, and Equinox doesn't seem to realize the shot's coming in from above him. Zai in the trophy room, as we mentioned before. Smoke holding that window is so incredibly strong, so he will hold fast. 
Raising again, looking through these holes in the floor, but mainly waiting for the people coming from the dining room as they are spraying Equinox. He's trying to lock them in that way. More breach charges going off above the kitchen and above the uh, Rook's head. Will force him into a corner that allows Chris Goo to get the kill. He then gets raised again. Oh, and at range, managed to pick up the second kill by pure accident taking out Zai, who peeked from Trophy Room at the wrong moment. Doesn't realize that Raisingin is only downed here. He thinks Raisingin is the guy he killed and Zai survived. But Zai is the guy he killed and Raisingin survived and is right up close. Zafir now, the last man in the kitchen, does sprint past him. Actually takes down one player. As he sprints in the wrong moment. Furious G at the end of the corridor. Will pick up both kills though. Takes down Zafir. Chris Goo's kill onto Raisingin. Triggers through over Vitality as the next attacking team win another attack round. So one round apiece to either of these teams with well done attacks. The fuse charges themselves not really used too well, but the breach charges that he came with really, really right. damaged that defending team above kitchen and dining room. Oh yeah, I was shocked how much Frost attempted to win that fight. As I mean, she should have. backing off early. To be fair, with a shotgun through that tiny little hole like that, she should have been winning those fights. It's That's the true. second few peaks that she did it with her pistol. Yeah. Very uh, interesting strategy. Interesting, that's one word for it. <laughs> Vitality back on defense. They had two roamers last time over. One of them with a shot, uh, SMG. Same as before. But they weren't wholly successful last round. They were killed off within the first minute. And that allowed a powerful push from Angsel to make its way towards the objectives and ultimately win the map, the round rather. Can they hold it better this time? Going to reinforce a multitude of trap doors. Pulling down the master bedroom door. And then reinforcing one wall opposite. What do you have of your steam, mister? Reinforcing the wall! Where are you going? Just go reinforcing the library. By us now making holes in the office, looking for someone. Zai is dangerously close. Are you going to come up that ladder, Zai? You really shouldn't. You've heard the windows be broken up here. Drone activated. Attackers dropped. Looking at it. Droning up. Should see that that window is broken now. He does. Avoids it. Sees by us in there. Now realizes that he shouldn't go anywhere near that ladder. Drone is killed off. But he forced Bios to move, so he thinks he's comfortable going up anyway. here. Ooh, peeks it and hides. Peeks it and hides. Bios is not firing. Chris Goo taken out by Poseidon. Now Bios has to move because Chris Goo's been killed. C4 placed around the corner at the top of the stairs. Will go off to catch anyone trying to chase him down. There's no one there to do it. There's a fear on the basement level in the last man. Poseidon upstairs. Still checking his clear. Zai there too. That is the top floor hold. Zai is still unsure about whether or not Bios is going to be inside this room. Constantly teasing up and down. Bios is long gone, mate. Bios is down in the Snowmobile garage. It's time to commit or go elsewhere, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Does commit, ultimately. And Spray Spray gets up safely. Safely. Side still up there. Ash still downstairs outside the garage, looking in through a couple of windows. By us, located by attackers. holding down tight and underneath quite a few Angsel players, looking for the perfect time to flank. He went up those stairs slowly and carefully. Now he could catch Raisin Gannon beside an off guard, but doesn't realize this and doesn't need to. Raisin Gannon just avoiding the edge of that balcony. Still holding patient is by us. Raisin Gannon again just about avoids his crosshairs by hiding behind this fire, but he doesn't realize it. Now Raisin Gannon is revealed. The shots are coming through and he gets down. Eric Kinox peeks out. Biox does kill Raisingan but gets down for his troubles. Ultimately, was it worth a one for one trade when they already have the numbers disadvantage? Now, Thatcher spraying open the next door. Doesn't realize how close Squall is. Realizes that camera is gone. Squall is very, very tucked in there to the right. Rook holding the trophy for himself. Furious G into the kitchen, trying to do what he can to lock people into the main lobby, the secondary lobby area. Equinox tries to come in, walk straight into a trap because he didn't know Squall was there. Squall peeks out, goes for a second, but Poseidon, even though he's on low health, gets the kill, then is dropped down by Furious G from the kitchen. 
2v2 now. Last two coming in from the lobby. Zygos into the kitchen. Doesn't have the diffuser. They have to get both kills. And Thrax is down. But he cannot get the kill onto Smoke in time. time. And defenders get a time win. And Thrax, why you sprinted out there to be so aggressive? I do not know. If they had killed Smoke then, you were ruined. All you had to do was hide. Right. All yep. you had to do for the time it was hide. No reason to be aggressive there. But it pays off because... Mr. Furious SG was safe and hidden. They and may not have known that they didn't have the diffuser. Maybe he thought somehow that there was plant. I don't know. That's <laughs> I don't know why he rushed so fast. I was looking for. Uh, All you have to do then is just wait for the timer to hit zero, and if you don't win, then you know that you can't. So then you push. <laughs> and Furious G was still alive. Yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Try to give him better for the doubt, you know. Four shotgun shells used to break that hole. Not exactly efficient, but Poseidon does it all the same. First defending team to win a round, then Vitality were just there. Can they continue their attacking round win streak and get themselves a two round lead? Setting the welcome Seems a lot of the uh, teams don't seem to know if you back up just a little bit, you can one shot it with a shotgun. You know, if you don't stand directly over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just gotta make the spread nice and wide. I'm excited to play Bach with this change going on. I really am. <laughs> just just <laughs> thinking about shotguns and opening things up, and I'm like, man, Buck's going to be fun again. <laughs> I can't wait to see him using the Pro League. I think teams will use him, especially on PC. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> it's totally off topic. No, you know, whatever. Shotguns. You know, Punchy Stick, I prefer apples over oranges. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay, just, all right. Just thought I'd put it in. Oranges are easier, in my opinion. Well, you have to do all the weird peeling and then pulling apart and taking all the way. Just but apples, you just put it in your mouth and eat it. Just yeah. Oh, oh, eat around. And you get that really satisfying sound when you like chew into an apple. <laughs> yeah, but what if you have like a. Crisco! Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> so oh! Escapes by the hair on his chinny chin chin. As Poseidon hunts to find out where he may have vanished to. Go, just do it. But Crisco is long gone in towards the snowmobile garage, right on top of a cap cat trip. Goes for the melee instead. And then to the back alley. We'll back up by B now, because he knows where he is fighting Raising Gan in this other room. Squall comes in, Raising Gan gets pinned into a corner and dropped. Nice hunt by Vitality. And uh, Squall didn't take a whole lot of damage, in fact none, while pinning him into that location. But it took half the round to do that. You know when you are saying you were jealous of very good aim on cameras <laughs> with console. Well, that's still a lot better than I do. <laughs> it's time to move forward. Frost Trap underneath the door is killed off then by Chris Q as the EMP goes underneath and he will then range breach the first and second doors into the dining room. Pre-fires it. Poseidon comes up close waiting for them to come around the corner with that Super 90 in tow. This time Bios is putting a charge off in the floor above but it's not near Poseidon's position. The drones, however, will force him to move. Drones locking Yeager in one location. Shots coming through above, hit Equinox, take him down, Furious G, grabbing that one. And they're slowly picking off these defenders from their very static locations through the floor and around corners with grenades. Reloading. Furious G looking for another one. Did see him on the drone, but couldn't land the grenade in the right spot. Zai still being droned out on the other side of this room by Anthrax. Peeks around the corner. Oh, there goes your head. Tries to smoke the window, but the crosshairs were already there from Anthrax. And he sprays onto the kitchen as well, trying to find Zephyr. Neither of them kill the other, but they are both taken very, very low. And now the two defenders, Zephyr and Poseidon, don't even have 10 health between them. Grenade comes over, down goes one, down goes the other Furious G, and Vitality are on a spree. Two rounds running, grabbing one as the attack, one as the defense. They have themselves a two, two round buffer, heading into round number five. Like the little breakdance moves on the camera there at the end. I think uh, picking up that defense round for Vitality is going to be huge for this, because again, both teams are playing very similarly, and now it's kind of the opposite of playing where the attack team seems to apparently be the easier side for these guys. Uh, neither team can really hold that defense very well. 
But nope. Vitality being able to pick up that one might be the winning win winning round for them in the long run. Is very possible. The winning win, as I said at first. <laughs> winning win. The winning win. Anthrax then, reinforcing the garage door. Now that Vitality won that previous defense, have to switch it up. Now down here into the wine cellar and snowmobile garage. No bandit, not trying to do any funky battery play. But do still have to reinforce it all the same. Anything else would be silly. We have seen teams use slightly different entry strategies here though in the previous game when they were still attacking the same basement didn't choose to go anywhere near the standard familiar known meta entry points, shall we say. So, let's see if this garage door is even assaulted by the attacking team. Who have once again brought themselves out. A IQ instead of a fuse or a twitch. Thermite then straight onto the garage door. We'll do things standard and as expected. Starts to buzz it open. Anthrax has a look around there just to be sure. And then goes to hide and goes, yep, that, that is being thermited. As Bios B is taken out on the top floor by Poseidon. Pushing in very, very aggressively with that IQ. Takes out the worst kill into library after droning out the location of that room. Grisku is still around somewhere though, upstairs in the kitchen. Thinks he's hidden from that drone perhaps, and he may be. Hides in the corner, tries to keep his gun hidden around the uh, angle as well. It's a fierce drone now, checking the kitchen. But also bypass where he is. Doesn't turn around to check the hallway, and actually, I think he might have got away with that. This could be disastrous for the sphere. Sphere going in above. Chris Goose still hiding in this corridor then. In up top. Towards the stairs he goes. Camera's already been taken out. Down the stairs he goes. Chris Goo's now holding the far angle. Down the stairs. Yeah, oh, he doesn't no realize. Idea. That's it. Chris Goo drops him. Not the prettiest of kills, but the damage is done. Raising again now in the bar. We'll have a suspicion. <gasps> Does just about see him. And the sprint from Chris Goo comes in at the wrong time. Allows Raisin again to take his head off. So, still four attackers to only three defenders. They are locked downstairs and they are holding very, very tight angles. Poseidon locked on those stairs has taken a bit of damage already. No, he hasn't. That's a bug. He's taken no damage. Rook down there. Smoke down there. And Doc down the back stairs. Equinox coming down above him. Will not come down that final run. Poseidon drops a breach charge on the floor right above their heads. We'll see Furious G's feet just at the last second. Let's put another breach in a slightly better position. Equinox is droning down the stairs now and we'll find Squall. Squall choosing to move forward and perhaps kill Equinox before he comes off the drone, but that's not going to help. Here comes Equinox down the stairs. Peeks around, goes for the shots. Then both land a lot, but the kill ultimately goes to Equinox. Raising Ganon Poseidon now downstairs as well. Anthrax is pinned in the corner, picks up one kill onto Poseidon. The Fuser, though, is on Zai, and it will be planted in the corner until Furious G has something to say about it. He grabs that Diffuser kill. Anthrax now just have to hide in the corner. They're sprinting forward to try and kill him, but Anthrax is downed. Killed off by Furious G's smoke. Raising Gan. Sprints across the gap. He's going to chase him. He thought he was going for the Diffuser, which may not have been the worst call, but with the time so low, he went for the kill. Furious G still just about managed to hide and survive, and defenders win another round on time. A ticket to match point. That's, yeah, <coughs> that's a, uh, ultimately, I guess, Vitality finally figured out how to run defense on this map. But Angsel hasn't seemed to get it yet. We saw in the very first two rounds mm -hmm. we ever broadcast of any Xbox region. Yes. Both teams ran out of time and went to time victories. Yep. And we said, that's bad. <laughs> Fix your pacing. You need to give yourself more time. Right. If you're going to be that slow in your attacks. Absolutely. And they did. And they fixed it, and things got faster, and teams were pushing in with a minute to go, Attackers and they were giving themselves time, and, and it was all going nice. Right. So far, we feel like we've gone back to week one. I just feel that these teams are really well matched, and that's kind of uh, intimidating them into pushing slower than they might typically. You may 100% be right. 
I mean, make clearly it right. we've seen. Oh no, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> but uh, I mean, clearly the, there's definitely that that Zephyr versus Crisku yeah. game every single round. It always seems to come down to them running into each other, and uh, I feel like both teams sort of wait to see the result of that before they really do much. You know, it's kind of hold positions, wait to see who goes down, and then oh crap, it was Crisku. Oh darn, it was Zephyr this round. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are clearly the opening fraggers, and if neither of those get the opening kill, they don't seem to know what the hell to do. Even if they get a kill on someone else somewhere else, right? they still seem to freeze up and wait until one of those two names pop up. You're right. It's not quite what entry fragger means. But here we go. Potentially the last round. Poseidon taking the 9 mil this time. Zephyr. One of the lone roamers upstairs. We'll see Bios killing that camera. Can he land the shots? He can. Bios B goes down, so no more fuse. No more breaches or actual fuse charges to deal with. Anthrax at the top of the stairs takes the fight as well. Both of them spraying, and Anthrax wins this one. Fire and Chris Good holding a tight crossfire. Furious G and Anthrax still joining and checking the upper floors. Ash looking in through the window. Nose raising guns around that corner, I suspect. Zai checking another way. Furious G will blow his way into the garage then. Zai still watching that hole. He has his suspicions about Chris Coop. Equinox is here. Now knows that hole is open. The EMP comes in. Saves that trophy system. Poseidon still holding on a corner. Waiting for someone to come down the back alley. No one watching the main lobby. There's so much barbed wire on the stairs that Equinox should be safe from it. Poseidon comes in and this drone is really running them around the roses. Bar trap door gets blown open then. Equinox forced to reposition. Squall is outside with the diffuser. Can get in and hide by those bins to plant it. Down into the basement goes one Anthrax and he kills Poseidon as well as shooting in the back onto Rook. Squall comes in, gets into the bins with the diffuser, is going to start the plant. Zai. Pushing forward. We'll see him at the last second. Kills him just before the diffuser gets completed. Good save. By Very side. important kill. Sledge in from one side. Furious G now and Anthrax have to get on towards that diffuser. He gets across this and through the gap. Doesn't see him, but they do survive a couple of seconds. Anthrax gets tagged in the head. Zai is very, very low. Smoke comes over. Furious G jumps in. They turn back. Raising Game is trying to flank. And Anthrax is killed. Oh, sorry. Does kill Raising Gun. Picks up the diffuser, gets into the opposite corner. Will begin the plant here instead. 34 seconds, much better timing from Vitality. Diffuser completed this time. He gets outside and to safety. Furious G hiding in this corner, peeks out, takes his head off. Nicely done, Zai. It's a 1v1 and Anthrax is on incredibly low health. <gasps> Sees him, get up and run away. Knows he's safe to get into the other building now. Looks outside, he's got that ACOG. Anthrax is hiding from a distance. Here comes Zai. Can't even get the tag. All he needs and is one shot. shot. Switching weapons. <laughs> one Anthrax bullet. gets the kill. One bullet. That's all he needed. Anywhere. All he needs. Anywhere. Could have taken his toe off. And it would have put him down. But runs out of ammo with one gun. Switches to the second. And Anthrax pounces to finish him off. 